Hello and welcome back to Better Minecraft Hardcore. In today's episode, we're jumping back into this very, very dangerous portal. If you recall a few episodes ago, we tried that, but things really didn't go as planned at all. My goal at the end of this is to be able to get blazing blood as fuel in my Tinker Fort here so that we can use it to craft very cool things such as diamond tool parts. Speaking of diamond tool parts, in the last episode we upgraded our tools. We got the brand new pickaxe here, a cobalt mattock and a sword. And I do want to really quickly cover something because in the last episode I asked you guys if you knew how to get more upgrades. And you guys were amazing in the comments as always and there are a few methods. One is a mob head can increase the upgrades just like so. Which is really cool because we have a bronze cleaver so that makes getting mob heads quite easy. We're also able to make use of music discs as you can see right there. And I believe a book and quill and maybe some other ways as well. I don't have a book and quill so I can't test that one. Now one modifier I was told we could add is the emerald which is different to having a emerald tool piece like a tool tool handle or a binding as you can see right here if we get plus 2.5 illegit damage which is cool and we get increased durability by quite a lot 1300 something it seems that's really cool of course that does use an upgrade but yeah that does add a really cool durability buff to our stuff but i don't think i'm going to use that quite yet now i have a plan for today for how we're actually going to get the blaze rods because as we just said it didn't go very well according to plan last time but now i think i know how to do it we are going to be using the card assembler from create and it is very easy to make, so that is no problem at all. And if I hold W to ponder, we can see here that if we have a rail track, plop it in the middle here, power it with redstone, and then any block that is on top of this block right here, when the minecart goes under, it grabs that block and transports it, meaning that we will be able to move the spawner away from the fortress to a more suitable location, both for us to farm, but also a place that is a little bit more safe so that is what we're going to be doing we need rails and we also need power rails we also need a wrench and a hammer and we need the hammer to make a wrench but that's just to be able to killing the blazes in a different location either with my cleaver to eventually get blaze heads or i was told we can use some abilities here melting and the tank modifiers respectively so the tank modifier is as you can see it requires one upgrade slot which is important and all we need to do is basically get some sort of tank from tinker's construct here and apply it to it however the melting modifier requires an ability slot which we do have as you can see right there at the bottom it says abilities one we need that and it costs only two lava buckets blazing rods and a suit melter which guess what we do have it so that is something that we will be doing as well i don't know i think i do have some blaze rod oh well there we go that's my blaze rods that's that taken care of i also need the seared melter and if you were wondering, yes, we are jumping straight into this. And I think I'm going to attach this to my cleaver. I also need lava buckets, which, well, I guess we know where I gotta go to get that. This lovely place again. I should probably make an effort of actually making this place secure. So I can get in here without too much trouble. And there we go. We have melting the power of a melter on a stick. Melts attacked entities and items dropped. And that should take... Yep, it does take one ability away, so that's fine. There we go. It, it's been done. Now I'm a bit scared because this does have some lava in it. Take this, take this, and place that. Ah, there we go. I emptied it. Because I do not want the lava to be in the tank when we place it. So there we go. That does take up one upgrade, but that's fine. And yeah, that now has a tag and melting on it so this is the ultimate blaze blood achiever or gatherer I, yeah yeah you get the point all right so with the cleaver in hand it is time to make this cart assembler thingy thing which for that i do believe i need three logs andesite alloy which is just iron nuggets and andesite which apparently i cannot combine back into full blocks that's fine i guess i'll have to hope that i have some Andesite down here somewhere. Andesite, 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 where are you? Nope, no andesite down here. I'm sorry, what is that on the map? You see that? By the creeper now? Um, no, 
No, I'm getting. I'm, nope, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that so much. I don't know. No, no. I hate. I absolutely hate that. Nope. Goodbye. Get some white dye. And get gray dye. I can then combine that with cobblestone. And we then have andesite. And I then combine that with iron nuggets. We should get andesite alloy. All right. I just need to do that a few more times. There we go. Minecart or cart assembler. And not gonna lie, this is the very first item I have ever crafted from the mod create. I should probably look into that mod a little bit more. It looks cool. Anyways, that is a card assembler. We need a bunch of rail and powered rails. I don't remember why I need a wrench. A useful tool to, to working on kinetic contractions can be used to rotate, dismantle, and configure components. You know what? It probably is, it, it sounds like a good thing to have. All right, so one end side alloy, a bunch of buttons. And we got a cogwheel. And we need a stick and we need gold plate. And for that, I need a hammer. One gold, two iron. There we go. Hammer. And then if I take three more gold ingots, go ahead, put them together. I would think. Maybe. Ah, like so. All right. Three gold plates created. And then a stick. And boom, we now have a wrench. I don't know if I'll need it, but now I have it just in case. All right, now we just need a bunch of rail and a bunch of powered rails. I don't know how much we'll need. I don't want to make too much. I'm assuming a stack won't be enough, but I can always move things around. So I think that will be good enough for now. And then go ahead and make some powered rails. Yeah, 24 should probably be fine. All right, I have gold nettles, I have torches, I have a shield. I have my totem of undying. I think we're good. I'm a bit scared, but we do have one totem of a dying at least, but I really do not want to get to the point of using it because yeah, I may have other plans, but now we can remove this and then here we go again. We have much better equipment, much better armor this time. I will, however, equip my leather boots. It's not as good of armor, but good enough. At least it has fire protection. What is that? Eight, nine, something like that. I don't know. But here it goes. Okay. Hey, Bucky. Or Buckies. Here we are again. The nightmare. All right. If I remember correctly, the Nether Fortress was in this direction. Hold on. I think I'm. What are you? Hold on. I think. I think I'm going the wrong way here. Oh yeah, it's this way. Nope, no it is not. Aha, I found it. Okay, so I think my plan, I think, I think I got a little bit of a plan. I'm going to make a good room for the spawner to be in. Then I'm going to get the spawner in there and then I'm going to have escape places in that room, like doors and whatnot. Because the issue was, it was a big open area and that big place that took me up and threw me around... That really, that really was an issue. So I feel like if I have a room where I could properly escape, then I might be able to prevent that a little bit better. So if I go ahead and make a little bit of a cave entrance and light it up properly, and then in here I make a seven by seven. Actually, that feels too big. I'm gonna make the room a five by five. All right, this is a five by five room. Then I think I might push this back a bit. The spawner is going to be placed right in the center here. I'm going to make sure there's torches all around to make sure nothing can spawn. And the entrance will be right here. And I'm thinking an iron door with a lever or something that I can very easily get back and forth into. So if I have to run, I can just yeet and then press the lever to close the door behind me. All right. I think the delivery area for the spawner is in place then. I'm scared. <laughs> Aha! Uh -huh. Using a wrench on the minecart. Wait, go up, go back, go back. Wait, there we go. Using a wrench on the minecart will let you carry the contraption elsewhere. Oh! Well, I don't know if I actually know what that means, but I guess we are going to find out in just a second here. Okay, plan is get to the spawner, light it up all around, so hopefully nothing can spawn around it, and then quickly get to crafting. If anything spawns, we gotta we gotta go back. Okay. Get to this, place torches all around here. I don't... Okay, wait, okay. Yeah, you spawned, that's fine. I'm gonna place torches all around like this. At least that's what the wiki told me to. It looks like it might be... Uh, 
I'm not sure. <laughs> oh man, this um, this could go very wrong here. I do have a. Oh no, that is exactly what I hope not happening. What? There's two of them. There's two of them. What is this? No, 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 no. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Wait, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Ah, uh, I'm still stuck. I'm still stuck. Hold up. <laughs> What's going on? Okay. Okay. How did two? No, 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 no. How did two of them spawn right? Okay. How did two of those spawn right next to each other? Those are the creatures I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> oh dear me. Okay. Let me do some more research on that. Okay. I know why it didn't work. It can't be torches apparently. It has to be stuff like glowstone and shroom lights. Oh, you scared me, Bucky. Stuff like that. So, oh. Oh, that's convenient. Um, right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need a bit of this. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! The spawner has been destroyed. <laughs> what? What is this? Wait, what even? What happened here? Muted race rod. I don't know if I can pick these up. Can I pick this? Oh, okay, okay, okay. That that deadly. Right. Okay. Ow! Stop that. Can you? Can you guys please go, like, away or something? Okay, I have no idea what has happened here. Oh. Oh, they're just blaze rods when you fight. Right okay. They can be blaze rods or they can blow up. Okay, got it. Well, that does, um, put a halt to my plans just a little bit. <laughs> that was, uh, that was the only spawner I knew of. I mean, I'm sure... That's another one. Okay. That spawner will be the key. All right, well, I'm gonna run in and do what I need to do. Here goes. Okay, uh, block and block, block, I'm pretty sure. Uh, break this, block, break this, block, 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 block. At least that, I think, is the pattern to stop the blazes from spawning. Yeah, nope. Nope, definitely not, but there's two of them. Why do they keep spawning so many? I'm so confused. Oh dear me. No, 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 no. Clearly more research quiet. It appears that only these big blazes spawn. Could it be the case that whenever the spawner has been quote unquote disabled, that these creepy blazes that only, ow, that only they can spawn as so because the normal yeah, let's just block this off. Because the normal blaze, and so because the normal blazes can't spawn, there's only there's space for only them to spawn. Does that even make sense? Okay, one is still alive. I'm not going over there. The spawner did not blow up in my face last time I was here. Well, the question is, do we have another spawner other than those two? I'm afraid we don't, maybe. Right, well, I have four mutant blaze cores. Um... <laughs> huh. Well, this is both good and an issue. One, I don't know what I can even use these for. Secondly, uh... Oh, you guys. Secondly, I have lost... My fortress. Um, guys, I think I need a new fortress. Yep, second fortress located. Now this time when I find a spawner, I think I'm just gonna head to it. Because I think the reason that why those big bad blazes spawn is because I actually do manage to activate the spawner, but that then causes the chance for a super bad blaze to spawn 100% of the time instead of maybe only 2% of the time. At least that is going to be my theory here. All right, that's gonna be a spawner. Oh, hi. Well, I was gonna say on my left, but ow. Oh yeah, I forgot you guys have that wither on your arrows. Ow, that's not fun. Oh look, I got a wither bone from Ice of Fire. Neat. You look creepy. What? Obtain one piece of explorer's gear. I don't know what that does. Aha. Okay, it's active. Okay, I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful and I gotta be fast here. Okay, um, this... Okay, hold on. 
<laughs> this is all of a sudden going happening very fast. Okay, this, this, right under it, and then place this down. Okay, let's, oh, hi. Let's go. Action. Kill you, all right. Oh no, I need my pickaxe, okay, break this. Break this, um, place this under, place your account on a rail block, right, place that there. Okay, go back, place a lever, turn it on, do this, push that under. I got it, and I think if I use the wrench here, um, mystical force is binding this card contraption to the world. Oh dear, okay. Uh, right, so I need to break this now. We got it though, we got the spawner. I think it is disabled while it is on the minecart. Just didn't expect to have to, uh, <laughs> Somehow get this thing all the way back home from here. That's gonna be a bit of a pickle, especially as I only have one stack of. Oh dear, no, this is not gonna work well. I can't carry this thing all the way back home. Can I break that? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh hi. Okay, I can deal. You know what? I can deal with you. I can. I can deal. I can. Hmm. I can deal with you. Go. I can deal with you. You're not a problem. Please. Go ahead and go away. Okay. Now what? I guess I just gotta keep it going. What are you? You know what? I'm not gonna ask questions. Okay. One thing I am a little bit concerned about is am I bringing this back home just for it to be broken? Like the. <laughs> like the other two I've had. Because in that case, this is all gonna be a bit of a waste. Okay. Well, so far, so good. Don't you dare push this back. Got it. Now you could say that, hey, Binary, you don't need to do this, just use the sword that you have made for this. And while, yes I can, but now, now that I'm kinda, well, already doing it, but also, now I don't have a spawner in the fortress near me, so <laughs> I would like to have it close to my portal. I do have a need to travel, well, I'm... I would say I'm almost halfway there, uh, to be honest, so yeah, it's not too bad. All right, connected to the surface, powered rails installed, and hopefully it's gonna make it all the way up to the surface or not. Whoa, nope, 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 nope. Okay, fine, let's try this again. And all the way up, sweet. And I can go ahead and use Vein Miner. Actually, I can use a wrench. I've just figured out. I can just right click and Wow, okay now we do have a piglin brute camp thing here, which is not so great, but we are Moving further and further towards where we need to be. I think I need to go down there I think I've gone a little bit too high up. First of all is the safe. I Think ooh, whoa Seriously? Okay, I gotta loot these. I got I gotta loot these. That's incredible loot. Wow. Okay, uh moving on. Gas <laughs> now is really not a good time. We could just disappear. That would be great. That's a gas boner. How's that fair? Okay, we gotta move quick here because there's a gas boner right there apparently. Alright. Push. Why? I wonder, can I hit the spawner? I might be able to hit the spawner. I gotta be careful I don't jump off myself here. Direct hit, but unfortunately didn't hit the spawner. <laughs> that did though, but unfortunately that did not destroy the spawner. Okay, well, my spawner is safe. Oh dear. I'm not. Okay, let's get this thing moved. Stat. Okay, staircase. Move it over, and that is the spawn area right there. Why? How dare you? It's almost like this mod pack knows what my what the Bob I hate most is in Minecraft. All right. Pushy push. 
Get up there. Let's go. I just realized whatever you do, do not hit the spawner <laughs> or the minecart. <laughs> that would be really not good. No, 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 no. Go away. <laughs> okay. 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 That does it. That really, really does it. Hello there. <sighs> Good. Oh, there's a chest in here. Ow! What's in it? Mm. Yeah, no, don't really care. I got a little crazy at the end there. You know what? Everything considered, I think maybe I'm going to make the room over here instead. <laughs> now the reason for this is, A, it's going to be less headache having to transport this stupid thing, but also it won't be so close to my portal. Um, that, yeah, I will be able to, hopefully anyway, run away properly and not put my portal at jeopardy. Also, it's closer. Okay, and right in... Here. Okay. A little friendly push up the hill there. Okay. Remove that block and it is in position. Now, I then need my security doors. Alright. Iron door in place. Okay, so now the blaze spawner is going to pop there. I need to expand this room a little more. Because when the mutant blaze dies, it explodes. So if it suffocates and then dies, that's going to blow up the spawner, and that is what blew up the other spawners. So that is something we most definitely don't want happening. I think one cool addition to that mod is... Okay, um... Here goes. What will spawn next? Okay, normal blazes. I can deal with this. Alright, we can kill them easily. Okay. Get out. <laughs> This is literally going to be a process. I can see the blaze blood right there. I just don't know how much we are actually going to be getting per blaze kill. Okay, get out. I need to go map here. Okay, that seems reasonable. I'm going to put out the fires because I do not want a mutant one to spawn because the other ones can't. Okay, oh, and we got a blaze head. Would you look at that? We actually got a blaze head. Okay, so it says here, 80 MB of blazing blood. Okay, that's not a whole lot. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna say that that is enough testing for now. <laughs> this actually works though, finally. Yeah, I think we've done enough with that for today. I only need two more things. One, to equip my, nether boot, my iron boots here, and two, to get some more nether quartz. Alright, hopefully that should suffice for now. Alright, so it has been a little while between the last clip that you saw and this one because I've done a bunch of research but I've also done some stuff off camera that I'm going to show you in just a moment. But first, I want to upgrade our cleaver just a little bit and I do realize that this episode is a little bit, is going to be a little bit lengthy so I want to jump straight to it. So, we have our cleaver here. It currently only has one upgrade slot which isn't enough for me. I am going to increase that to two upgrade slots, just like so. Now, one thing I also want to change about the cleaver here is the handle. When I made the cleaver, I used two iron tough handles, but I want to change at least one of them to something that gives a little bit more attack damage because I feel like it is a bit too slow for my liking. So I want to see if there's something that we can really quickly increase well diamond would be ideal but that is why we're doing this in the first place i could use emerald tough handle but i want to get rid of the emerald stuff on it so i'm going to try and get something else if i can all right i think this is actually going to work rose gold tough handle we have used rose gold before so i think that this is probably going to work just fine now while that is smelting right there, we can go ahead and apply a little bit of a modifier here. The looting modifier, because I'm hoping that this will increase our chances of 
not only getting heads, but also getting blaze rods. We might as well need at least one ability slot to have this. Oh, well, um, huh. I'm sure there's another way of getting more ability slots. So if you know about that, please let me know down below in the comments because I really want looting on this. But, uh, oh, well, that, uh, that will just have to wait. And that's gonna, nope, that's gonna drive me insane. Tough handle. Boom. All right, Rose Gold tool handle, and I should be able, yes. So this does decrease the durability, but the attack speed is upped by a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Oh, and it adds another upgrade slot as well. So I think I'm going to do that. And it's not gonna be a huge change, but it is going to definitely be something. At least until we can get better materials. All right, so with those modifications, let's now head into the nether and I can show you the stuff that I have done. All right, so I have upgraded the spawn area a little bit. So I have decorated it quite a bit. I'm missing the ceiling here, but this is now the spawn room. It is currently in a minecart. It is disabled and I want to further improve on this just a little bit because you see, I want to make sure that the spawner is safe. I basically want a kill switch, a switch that basically launches a minecart, grabs the spawner and puts it somewhere safe just in case one of those mutant blazes spawn and explodes this area. So that way I will make sure that my spawner is actually safe. So I am thinking of making a little bit of a kill switch over here. If we go in here, I'm thinking cutting this out in the floor like so. Now it do then need to move this minecart out of the way. This would then be where this thing sits. That is where the minecart is going to sit. If I brought a little bit of redstone, so if I do that, basically over there, this then activates and I can put it up a bit so it might be a little bit more accessible. This then launches the minecart, shoots it across here, picks up the spawner and will then continue in this direction at a safe distance. I can add some powered rails across here to make sure it really shoots across at good speed. And I just wanted to stop here because then I know where my minecart is after the explosion happens. I think I can, yes. Okay, so this block can in fact go through solid blocks. So I'm going to do just that, okay. I guess now we need to test if this is actually going to work. All right, we are ready for first test. So minecart is in position and ideally I want to then place trapdoors like so. And hopefully that won't mess up any of the spawn or anything like that. So let's test eternal spawn. We hit the kill switch. Oh, right, I, feel, I, I, <laughs> I forgot a few steps here. As this lever is turned on, we also need to power this. So I need to do a little bit more redstone wiring. Okay, test number two. Minecart is in place. And okay, so we need a few powered rails, but other than that, it would continue down. So we are almost at the finish line. Okay, so that can be a powered block, which is great. And in theory, I can go ahead and place a Risto torch right there. And a powered rail, so that is powered. Um, how on earth is this still being powered? All right, here we go again. Test number three. I place the temporary spawner re put the minecart back there all right muted blaze spawn we push this it flies across brings the spawner to a safe distance explosion happens and we're good all right now how do i get this back to where it's supposed to be <laughs> i think all i have to well all quote unquote is break this push or place that and I think we could definitely get rid of these torches so I almost forgot and that is that we are good to go sweet I think our blaze farm is now finally ready for proper use 
I might go ahead and AFK this for a while in between episodes, but yeah, I think this is a project. Oh dear, that's a lot. I think this is a project. Well done. Big ow. Whoa, you guys really hurt. Okay, I think I think that's enough. I think yep, 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 yep. I think that's enough showcasing for today. So far though, we have 200 MB of blazing blood and we have two blaze heads as well. There is one small thing I want to do before we conclude this episode though. And that is because we found that amazing loot in the last piglin brute spawner thingamathing and we have one right there and I want to see what loot this one has to offer at the top. Yep, we're at the top. Which I think is safe enough for exploration. And I take a look in the chest. Oh yeah. Blocks of iron, gilded blackstone, and a netherite ingot. We now have two netherite ingots. I wonder if there's anything else like inside here. Looks like there's some gold and plenty of chests in there. Ah, and there is the spawner. But as we're running very low on video time, I'm going to leave that for now. I just wanted this top chest. We'll have to get inside one of these very, very soon. Back home we go. Now I am wondering if I go ahead and make a seared fuel tank and I place it and I right click with the Emerald Tinker's Bronze Cleaver. Yes. Yes. The fuel from the cleaver gets transferred to the tank. And if I go ahead and put in the blaze heads, I wonder if this is then how this is going to work. Yes. Now, I think this works. Yes, that is how it works. So now I think, I wonder what happens if I add it to this. I can't change the different types of fuel, so I would have to take this out, place this in, and now we're then using blazing blood. I'm sure there's a better way of doing that, but for now, this is going to be how we swap between fuel types. Guys, we are now able to make things like diamond pickaxe heads. I am very happy. Especially because my Dragonbone pickaxe is taking a beating at the moment. Speaking of which, I will right now go ahead and apply the Emerald upgrade, which is going to increase the durability by a lot. So here goes. We're now looking even more fancy. Well guys, that's gonna do it for this episode. I really hope you have enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you do, do consider hitting that subscribe button and enabling those notifications. Also, if you're new to the channel, I have a community Discord server linked down below in the description. If you're interested, you can go ahead and join that. Also, just because I barely ever plug it, you, you can go and follow me on Twitter if you so desire. But anyways, hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and Goodbye. I should also point out in the next episode I am planning to take a little bit of a break from the Tinker's Construct mod because I feel like we've been doing a lot with that. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, you'll just have to see what I have planned because uh, yeah, uh, uh, I'm excited. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm gonna go now. Uh, Q explosion.